This video is sponsored by my Patreon. Thanks to Patreon, all of my videos are ad-free. Become a patron today and get frequent updates and more. Link in the description. Hey guys, it's Apple here and welcome to another Apple Reviews. The new series where I re review things. That, that's really all there is to it. Today, we'll be talking about Steam games. Steam is a fucking great place. It has awesome games and I use it all the fucking time. Though, there is a serious issue. And that's the lack of quality control. Have you ever been scouting the website, looking for that really weird hidden gem between mountains of AAA titles to stumble over a game like Crypt of the Serpent King, Wallfire, or Firefighter, the simulation- Wait, wait, what? No, not, not Firefighter Simulator, but Firefighter the Simulation, uh... Oh, okay, suit yourself, I guess. Anyway, you've probably stumbled upon games like this. We're digging a little deeper into the archive of Steam games. And don't even get me started on the Steam Greenlight. That shit is frankly embarrassing. Today, I thought it would be cool to maybe do some reviews of terrible Steam games. But hey, you'll probably enjoy seeing me in pain, so, uh... Uh... <laughs> Let's just get started. Here's five terrible Steam games. Hey, Lenny, roll that intro. So our first video game I bought and played is called Zombie Soets. I've noticed that a lot of these shitty Steam games are zombie games. I guess it's just very easy to program. I mean, in most games you can't just come up with the excuse that it's the enemy's nature to just walk at you with no thought. You have to actually program intelligent AI, so of course it makes sense for them to make these zombie games. Plus, it's also popular, which I, I really don't get. But anyway, this game is really fucking bad. Not because that surprises you in any way, since it is on this list. And mostly, it's because of the AI. The AI of this game is absolutely unforgivable, even for a zombie game. And zombie games already have a low standard. The zombies act incredibly unintelligent to the degree where I think the coding is just a few lines long. And I'm not even kidding, I actually think these are like 10 lines of coding. The zombies damage way too much and you damage way too little, so it becomes this game where you're just running and dealing nearly no damage and if you sleep up for a second, you're instantly punished. <laughs> and if you thought that was bad, then you haven't seen the loading times of this piece of shit. It can take up to two minutes to reload. How is that even possible? This is fucking fun. Loading. Can I... Wait, is there like multiplayer in this game? If that's fucking multiplayer... Loading, loading. Oh my god. This is how long it's taking to load. This is like a fucking 2D game. <laughs> oh, what the fuck is this loading screen? It's taking like fucking- it, We're in 20 seconds. It's a 2D, ugly 2D game. It's taking like half a minute now to load this fucking shit. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me with this- <laughs> It's not like this game is a beautiful 3D world with interesting graphics and sequences. It's an ugly 2D map, and yet it has the audacity to take up to two minutes to fucking load. Next up on the list of reasons why the human species has failed, we have Aircraft War X. Now, have you ever tried those top-down aircraft shooters? You probably have when you were like 12, if you're my age. Now, have you ever thought of actually buying such a game? No? Well, now you can, with Aircraft War X. Now, you're probably asking, what exactly do you do in this game? Well, let me tell you. Um, you just move your cursor around, and the player moves with you, and you then just dodge things while shooting at them, and I, I just explained the whole game, actually. Yeah, that's actually it. There's no bosses, no power-ups, really nothing. It's, it's the bare basics of a top-down aircraft shooter. Though, I, I gotta say, this game has some amazing graphics. Like, look at that fucking amazing background. So incredibly detailed. It's, it's astounding. Nah, but in all seriousness, this is not acceptable, even if it was a Flash game. And, th like, they have horrible standards. Next up is Clappy. Now, Clappy is kind of what happens if your game's art direction was a team of six-year-olds. This game looks exactly like those ugly drawings you made when you were like six years old. And if you think it was drawn by a six year old, I would say that the programming was at the level of a six year old too. Like, I, I can't even explain how bad this game is. Just, just look at this. <laughs> <laughs> F 
fuck yeah, dude. That's my fucking jam. Holy shit, dude. Whoa, it even lagged. Holy shit. What the f- <laughs> What? What? <laughs> what the fuck? This plat- <laughs> You have to be fucking kidding me. Is this made in Game Maker by any chance? Holy fucking shit. I made games in Game Maker when I was fucking 12! This is not- this can't be fucking real. This can't be fucking real. <laughs> what the fuck? Next up on our list is Jural's Chasm. Now, ever heard of Bible games? You know those games where you tell your mom, Mom, I want a video game. And, and she fucking buys a game about Noah's Ark or some shit. I mean, I'm not a part of a religious family, so I, I wouldn't know. But, but you know what I mean, like those really shitty games that were created with nearly no budget. Kinda like the Sioux Race, for example. By the way, look at this fucking intro. I remember playing it in the 90s. Me too. It sucked. Um, I'm not even sure how we got it, but I remember a joke we made about like, coming down from space on an asteroid. <laughs> the main game starts with you flying around in a spaceship collecting Bible passages. This takes such a long time that I just gave up after that. Apparently there's like more than, than this after this segment of the game, but I couldn't bother to finish it and quit after like 10 minutes. You may think I should play more to be able to criticize it, but that's kind of like saying you have to endure waterboarding for more than 10 minutes. If you, if you want a short description of this game, Steve Gaming FR explained it best when he described the game as electronic vomit. I would say that explains the game pretty well. So we have come to the last game in this video, and trust me, I have saved the worst for last. Our last game is called Bold New World. I wouldn't even describe it as a world. <laughs> it's the worst game I've ever fucking played, and I'm not even kidding, and I've played really bad games. I mean, I've played the other games on this fucking list, so this must be really bad. Oh, where to even begin? This game is what we call an asset flip. It's basically where you buy game assets from different stores, or pirate them and then put them in your game. After that, just sell the game. You don't change anything or create interesting levels. You just sell them like it was your own work, with no respect for the actual craft of making a good game. Now, this game you know is good, because it actually won two awards. Now, the first one is called Best Game of 2017. 2017 hasn't been close to end it, so it must be so good that they knew that nothing would be able to trump it. And the second award is called number one in the top 100 best games. <laughs> well, this game must be fucking great then, holy shit. It just trumps everything. Nothing is better than this fucking game. It's the best game of all games ever created, apparently. <sighs> I, I wonder who created these awards. Apparently someone by the name of Lime to Reward Organization. Huh, <sighs> I, I wonder who made this game. Oh, what, what a coincidence! A person by the name of Lime. You know, I'm sure this is completely a coincidence. I mean, of course it is. I mean, surely Valve makes sure that you can't create fake awards, right? <laughs> right, guys? Guys? Now, you've probably already been convinced to buy 10 copies of this game, but if you haven't, maybe check out this amazing trailer. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> New RPG game. <laughs> the battle with the. <laughs> what? How is this a fucking real game? Oh my. New <laughs> what? You still don't want to buy this amazing game? Okay, okay then. Maybe this incredibly accurate description of the game will convince you. In the game, you will have unique battle in melee weapons, a beautiful graphics, a big uh, medieval town. You know, 
I really wish more games had unique battle in melee weapons. This is actually my favorite genre in video games, so I fully support this game testing new boundaries. Now that you've got a little taste of what this game offers, get ready to get your mind blown. But this game's unique battle in melee weapons. <laughs> Whoa, I have 500 FPS. Like, okay, this is like already where, where you know it's shit. Because you know firstly that this is stolen. I'm pretty sure, like, you just expect things to be stolen. There's also an about section. Is there anything on it? There's nothing on the about section, what? So basically, yeah, there's no about, like, it says about, but that doesn't even work. Like, the about section doesn't work. Every time I try to switch, it, like, takes, it's it requiring for it to load. You can load a game, so start game, let's see here. <laughs> what? I'm already fighting? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is this? I paid for this. I paid money for this. I paid three dollars for this game? Probably more than that. How is this acceptable? <laughs> what the fuck is this fucking texture over here? Like it's mirrored. It's like mirrored texture. It looks really fucking weird. <laughs> this is fucking terrible. What the fuck is this game? At least one thing I could say that's good is that it's actually running pretty high FPS, but it's not very hard to create- Oh wait, no, it's not uh, running high FPS, it's 90 FPS on this shitty map on like a pretty decent graphics card. And it's not- it's over, only 90 FPS, and I have a 144 Hz, and I can fucking play TF2 with way better- What?! What the fuck is going on?! What?! Why is it all of- So, uh, yeah, that, those are the games. Um, I fucking- Oh my god. As you can see, there's no reason to improve Steam's quality control. I think actually think this game is a perfect example of how great Steam is. But all jokes aside, the lack of quality control is a serious issue with this client. Steam should begin taking this shit seriously, because it's damaging the chances of good games getting a chance in the spotlight. Another problem is that people buy these games no matter the quality. Two of my Steam friends apparently own these games. Why you may ask? Well, if you check their Steam profiles you'll see. They both want a high level on Steam. So they get free EXP on their Steam level by buying shitty games. This is really clever by Valve since it encourages people to buy a really high amount of games which is of course really beneficial for Valve itself. But I think this is a serious issue if this is the consequences. If people can make shit games and actually get sales because people are buying them without actually playing them, that's seriously bad for the market. I mean, at least you can get a refund. I mean, it's great that they have added that, so that's at least a plus. I, I did get a refund myself and I had no issue removing moving the game from my library and getting my money back, so that, that's a good thing. I'm glad that I didn't waste my money on, on that shit, because apparently they're getting rewarded for making this bullshit, and I don't, th I don't think that's okay. So guys, thanks for watching. If you want more videos like this one, be sure to support me on Patreon. Otherwise, have a great day, and uh, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Bye.